Hello! Today I'll be making pizza dough. We'll be grilling pizzas on a grill a little bit later. And since I'm already making dough, I'm going to make some extra so I can have some to put in my freezer for later. Uh, this is a easy thing to fix, prepare for uh, the summertime on the grill, and it doesn't heat up the inside of the house. So let's get started. In this bowl over here, I've already got my yeast and my water dissolving. And the recipe I'm using today is uh, a pizza dough recipe from Mario Batali. If you go to thechew.com, T-H-E-C-H-E-W.com, click on the recipe tab and then search under recipes for Mario Batali pizza dough. You'll find uh, the recipe for this dough along with a margarita pizza that he prepares. Now I've used many different types of pizza doughs over the years and you know most of them work very well so you know choose whatever you like but this is just a little bit uh, as far as basics on the bread baking or the the making of bread and what all's going on. So <clears throat> I started with warm water over here in this bowl and then I added my yeast and what I'm doing is waking the yeast up and this is called proofing the yeast. I normally store my yeast in my freezer and it takes a few extra minutes for the yeast to come down to, uh, you know, to come down to room temperature, um, you don't want to make the mistake of getting your water too hot. If you get the water too hot, you'll kill the yeast. So I'm making a single batch over here and a double batch over here in this larger bowl. And for every 12 ounces you want a, a packet of yeast. But since I use my yeast in bulk, and I buy it in bulk, I'm going to be using two and one quarter teaspoons to equal one packet of yeast. And this is a jar I've had for many, many years. I just keep refilling it. Uh, because I buy the bulk cakes of yeast and store those in my freezer. Just in case I get any questions, uh, this is some yeast I have stored right now. And this is a one pound block of yeast. It's vacuum packed in this foil pouch. And I also store it in my freezer. Uh, it'll keep for years, years longer than what the package tells you. Um, I know I've had yeast in my freezer for six, eight years, I believe, and it still, uh, still works fine. So first I'm going to place my yeast in here. And in baking I do like to measure. I normally don't measure things unless I'm baking. this recipe it calls for a double zero flour. Um, in Italy a double zero flour is a fairly high gluten flour that is ground very fine. I'm going to do a couple different things here. I'm going to use some bread flour and then I'm also going to, going to make a batch where I'm going to mix uh, whole wheat flour with my bread flour. The texture will be a little bit different but it'll be better for me. So I'm going to add my yeast, I mean my water. And then the next thing we need to do is feed the yeast. Um, it needs a little bit of sugar to give it a little boost to help that flour to rise. So here I'm just going to dissolve this and while I'm letting this this bowl sit for a few minutes. I'm going to come over here and add some sugar to my yeast. Okay. 
And this particular recipe calls for one and a half teaspoons of sugar. So go ahead and add the sugar to my double batch. So I need about three and a half cups of double zero flour. So to this first batch, I'm going to add two and a half cups of bread flour and one cup of wheat flour. It's a, a red wheat flour. And this red wheat is a um, spring wheat. This is wheat that I ground myself. Now I'm adding the salt this recipe calls for two tablespoons of salt and I'm using kosher salt so if you're using a finer salt uh, you'll use a little bit less the reason that you use less uh, if you're using a table salt or a finely ground salt is because the salt crystals are smaller and they, when they're lying on top of each other, there's less um, negative space between the salt crystals. So you actually get more salt on your tea, in, into your teaspoon, into your measuring device. But with kosher salt, it's a much larger granule. So it takes a little bit more of kosher salt because there's more air space, so there's really less salt. Now I might find this to be a little bit too salty. I'm not sure since this is a different recipe that I'm trying today. So then I'll measure my flour out for my double batch. I'm going to use all bread flour for this double batch. Providing I have enough here. It's three cups. And the reason that I mix my uh, whole wheat flour with my bread flour is because uh, I want this bread to, uh, to be light. Uh, bread flour is a high gluten flour, so it's very stretchy. It gives you that texture that you're used to, that you can get that crunch and a little bit of that chew with the bread. Whereas if I used all whole wheat flour, it would be very, very dense. It would not have 
the same sort of texture. It wouldn't have that chew to it. So that's why I uh, mix the wheat with the red flour. Put in my salt. I'm going to add a little less salt on this one. I think I'll go three tablespoons and see what I get. Would have been better if I'd add, added my salt when I added my flour, but I was too busy talking to you. But it'll still be all good because I'll be in here mixing this together really well. Making bread is quite simple, and in the summertime, there's nothing better than uh, using a pizza dough or a flatbread. I love flatbread. It's excellent and grilled. And when you're working with a high gluten flour, you need time um, between mixing to let the flour rest a little bit. Let that gluten relax so it's not quite so stretchy. Some pizza dough will have olive oil in it. This one doesn't call for it, but you do use olive oil once your pizza rounds are made and um, before you add your topping ingredients. Okay, I need to let this rest for a few minutes and then I'll come back to it. I'm going to go to my single batch of my whole wheat. family would prefer a white bread over the wheat as far as pizza dough is concerned, but I snuck a little in here on them anyway. Okay, this dough is pretty sticky, so I'm going to add just a little bit of olive oil. so that it doesn't stick while it's rising. And I could use this right away, but I really prefer that, uh, that it rise at least once. It'll be a, nice, a nicer dough. I don't mind if a little of my wheat flour gets into this batch. It's not a huge deal. I'm going to cover and let this rise, and since it's so hot outside, there's no reason to use electricity creating heat. I'm just going to uh, cover the top and place this outside for about an hour or so. 